Hey, what's up everybody? How's it going? Welcome to the Majestic Mashikasaurus YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Milo and I debunk bad science, essentially. And today, well, boy do I have a doozy for you. This will be my fifth response to the YouTube channel called Christians Against Dinosaurs, who promote the idea that dinosaurs never existed. Today I'll be responding to what is most definitely their most popular video, with 887,000 views. But... This does put a smile on my face. It's only three and a half minutes long, but it is packed full of... Well, you're about to find out. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. Hello. Um, so I wanted to talk tonight a little bit about fossils that are found in the ground. And um, I guess I'll start a little bit about what the fossils actually are, and then go into um, a little bit about the composition and what they end up being when everything is said and done. Um, so a fossil is not actually a piece of bone. A fossil is actually um, a bone that was once in the ground that has been then filled with limestone, calcium, and other kind of stone-like deposits over the course of many, many years. And at the end of the day, it ends up looking like a bone, but it's not really a bone. It's really a rock instead of rock. Kind of, yes. She briefly mentioned this in another video of hers, so I briefly explained it in a previous response of mine, but let's clear this up again. Fossils are indeed no longer bone. They are the inorganic remnants of ancient organic material. But how do they form? Well, it's a very unusual process, and I mean that literally. The vast majority of animals that die will not fossilize, and only some environments lend themselves to easy fossilization. First, after a creature dies, it needs to be buried pretty quickly. If it's left exposed to the elements, come on, come on and meet the, elements. the remains will very quickly be decomposed, torn apart by scavengers, eaten up by bacteria, and eroded by weather. However, if it's buried quickly enough, then the fossilization process can begin. It's for this reason that the vast majority, like 99% of fossils we find, are from marine animals, because the soft, moving seafloor is much more likely to bury a carcass quickly than anywhere on land. Once buried, the decomposition process will indeed begin to take place, removing all of the soft tissue from the animal and leaving behind only the bones. But this is by no means a fossil yet. What's cool about bones is that they're made of both organic and inorganic materials. So the organic materials like blood cells, collagen, fats, etc. will eventually break down, leaving behind the inorganic minerals like calcium. What's left now is a weaker porous mineral compound in the shape of the original bone. This little bit of porousness, by the way, is the reason that fossils will stick to your tongue if you lick them. We're almost done, but there's one last step. Over millions of years, water from the surrounding earth where that soon-to-be fossil is buried will start to seep into those pores where the organic material used to be, leaving behind minerals along the way that will start to build up and reinforce the fossil, making it much harder, and finally, a durable rock. I've seen a really good metaphor a few places that likens this process to that of filling a sponge with glue. The sponge's shape will remain the same, but slowly it will become harder as the glue fills in its openings. This is also why fossils will have slightly different colors depending on where they're found, as they could have been reinforced by different minerals. Now the bone is a fossil, and if it can survive millions of years of heat and pressure of sedimentary rock building up on top of it, then perhaps one day a little bit of it will be resurfaced and exposed to the outside world, or a lucky human might wander along, find it, and start digging for the rest. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get back to what Kristen has to say. So you have a rock this big. And you say, okay, inside this rock this big, there's a bunch of fossils. Here you go. And you hand the rock off to a paleontologist. And the paleontologist takes a little mallet and they chip away at it. And at some point they come out with something looking like a bone. And that's a fossil. So, no. Clearly paleontologists don't just pull out random pieces of the ground and hope to find fossils in them. Like I mentioned briefly before, part of the fossil has to already be a bit exposed for anyone else to start digging around looking for more. Now, sometimes it might be the case that we find enough fossils in one chunk of land that we would realize we don't have the right kind of precision tools to excavate all the little bits there on site, in which case we can wrap the whole big lump in a plaster jacket and ship it off to a prep lab at a museum where other scientists can finish off the job. This part can take hours, and when I say hours, I mean weeks and weeks, and perhaps even years, depending on the size, amount, 
shape and integrity of the fossils being uncovered. At my local museum, the Natural History Museum of Utah, which y'all should definitely come check out sometime, everyone that does this last part, or pretty much everyone that helps do this last part, are volunteers. Keep that in mind, I'm gonna circle back to that later. So, um, here's the question that I pose. Now, the first fossil that was ever found was actually after they came up with the idea of a dinosaur, right? That seems a little bit far-fetched, right? Why would the bone that was found or the fossil that was found actually be the exact same thing as what was originally hypothesized without any other evidence? It doesn't make any sense. She's made this objection in another video in greater detail, so I responded in quite great detail as there is so much wrong with everything she just said. I can summarize this pretty quickly, though I'd highly recommend you go check out my other response video to see the full explanation. Though, fair warning, that was my first YouTube video ever, and there were some times when I seemed kind of snooty about it, which is pretty cringy, but anyway, it's good content anyway. Essentially, she claims that the first dinosaur to ever be discovered was found in 1854 by Ferdinand Hayden, but that was 12 years after Sir Richard Owen coined the word dinosaur. The problem is, Hayden found the first dinosaurs in America, but absolutely not the first dinosaur fossils ever. The first dino to be named and described was Megalosaurus in 1824 from England. Now, this was 20 years before Sir Richard Owen came up with the name dinosaur to describe it. So no, she's just wrong about that. Now strap yourselves in, cause she's about to go off. And I'm a letter. Now I give to you. Here, you're my paleontologist. Turn that into what it was before I ripped it apart. Here, you can have some spackle too. As much spackle as you want. Here, turn this. into what it's supposed to be. All right, who knows what you're gonna come up with, right? Now, here, take this same substance, this same spackle, and by the way, it's supposed to be this little guy, Brachiosaurus, who's 40 meters tall. This is what he looks like. This is what the head was supposed to look like. This is a Brachiosaurus skull. Make me a Brachiosaurus skull. That and as much stack as it Chances are, what are you going to come up with? If you want to keep your job, you come up with a Brachiosaurus skull. If you want to be truthful, you come up with whatever it was that I smashed apart to get this stuff. When millions of dollars are on the line, which one are you going to do? My guess is you're going to go with the Brachiosaurus. That's where the money is. Yeah, so that's the crux of it. It's a conspiracy. She believes that paleontologists don't actually find fossils. Instead, she believes paleontologists just collect random bits of rock and then stick them together to form the shape of dinosaurs in exchange for millions of dollars. So I've determined that I have 10 different problems with this. Number one, where's the money coming from? Do you think the government is paying millions of dollars to individual paleontologists? Number two, why so much? Remember what I said about those amazing volunteers at my Natural History Museum? Arguably, they're doing the hardest and most time-intensive work in the process of excavating fossils, but they're not getting anything in return other than the enjoyment. They're certainly not getting paid millions. Number three, even though sometimes fossils do come in lots of tiny little pieces, whether or not they start off like that, how can we possibly end up with these beautiful structures that look just like bones? Do you really think that if scientists just went around collecting random rocks of sizes and shapes, like whatever that drywall was that you had there, that they would just magically fit together to look like this or this? Really? Number four, when paleontologists find fossils, the fossils aren't just lying on the ground. They're inside the ground, like this or this, or even this. <laughs> so if you're going to claim that scientists bury fake fossils 
just to direct other paleontologists to go find them, like she has done in the past, why on earth make it so hard? Number five, clearly paleontologists aren't just collecting any old rocks. They're spending huge amounts of time and work extracting those fossils like I showed you in those pictures just now. You would probably be quite surprised at how long it takes to excavate and study dinosaur fossils. For example, in 2020, just this year, a pair of scientists just published their findings describing a new species of Allosaurus, Allosaurus Jim Madsenai. But the fossils they were describing were found in 1990, 30 years ago. That's how long it took to unearth and study them. If it was really just all about the money, don't you think they would have announced a new species pretty much as soon as they found it? Number six, we have literally found part of a small dinosaur with feathers and all preserved in fossilized amber. How do you explain that? Number seven, how do you explain trace fossils? like footprints, for example. Number eight, paleontologists change their ideas about dinosaurs and other prehistoric life as more evidence is found. Perhaps the best example of this is feathers. Though some had hypothesized a relationship between birds and dinosaurs, and the first Archaeopteryx fossil had been found all the way back in the 1860s, it was taken to be the first bird, and most didn't agree with a dino bird link until over a century later. It wasn't until the 1990s the beautifully preserved fossils from China showed a range of specimens from more bird-like to more dinosaur-like that all had feathers, that the paleontological community finally accepted that dinosaurs had feathers. Again, if scientists have just been making stuff up about dinosaurs without reference to any actual fossils, how does any of that make any sense? As the paleontologist Nizer Ibrahim put it, Paleontologists, and paleoartists in particular, should finally accept that there is no such thing as a final word in dinosaur reconstructions, weight estimates, and behavioral interpretations. Look at Tyrannosaurus, Quetzalcoatlus, or Diplodocus reconstructions and count the number of changes in posture and proportions and interpretations. Scavenger, not scavenger, next held low, next held up, terrestrial stalkers, fish eaters, etc., etc. All we can do as paleontologists is present a reconstruction that best fits the available data and then it is refined as more material comes to light. Number nine, on that note, not all paleontologists agree about everything. Was Tyrannosaurus an active hunter or was it a scavenger? Was Quetzalcoatlus a fisher or was it an on-land scavenging stalker? Scientists don't all agree. As another example, in 2017, a new study was published that proposed that the entire way we've always classified the dinosaur family tree is wrong and they proposed a new reconstruction of the way the dino family tree might actually look. Well, it sparked some controversy, not everyone agrees with it. In fact, most people probably don't. But it's also shown that likely no current model of dinosaur phylogeny is really up to scratch. And that's big news. So while the community is trying to still figure out what's actually right, everyone seems to have a slightly different idea. How does that make any sense if it's just a huge conspiracy where the paleontologists dictate to us everything we ostensibly know about dinosaurs? We don't know everything and often disagree. Number 10. Another YouTuber named Arn Ra did an interview with Kristen in which she said this. The trilobite? Uh, do you accept that this is real? It's Christians against dinosaurs, not Christians against fossils. And then goes on to say fossils that fossilize literally like hours after the organism dies. No, there's not. There are things that become susceptible to concretion. That actually happens. Yeah, uh, like more recent animals. Yeah. But it's a very different process than fossilization. Well, they're so fossils. If you want to talk about, huh? They're fossils. No, they're not. They're you called living fossils. Living fossils is a different category. Unfortunately, she is very confused about the fossilization process. She's mixing up two different geological processes, fossilization and concretion, along with the idea of a living fossil, which is a different thing entirely. She tried to say that some fossils can form in just hours, which is simply not true. The process I described earlier about the decomposing of the organic components of bones and the slow trickle of water through those openings to leave behind minerals takes a long time. Like Aaron said, there is another process called concretion, and I could see how this can get kind of tricky as concretions form around something else, and that something else could be a fossil in the process of being formed. But I think the difference is that concretions are formed if enough sediment is cemented in and around the fossil fast enough for it to form an ambiguous blob 
usually oval shaped or something weirder, like these. Now this does indeed happen much faster than the slow, precise fossilization process that takes millions of years, but it still takes months or even years, which is extremely fast in geologic time, but is nothing like hours. She also mentioned living fossils, which is a name given to animals that are still alive but haven't appeared to have changed much since their ancestral forms, something like a crocodile, for example. But that does not have anything to do with anything that we're talking about anyway. Anyway, if you guys can think of any other ways to poke holes in this ridiculous conspiracy, I would legitimately love to hear them, so please leave your ideas in the comments section below. But hopefully that clears things up for now. I hope this was insightful for what happens on a daily basis in the world of paleontology. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you next time. Well, I can actually share in that sentiment. Hopefully you learned something about fossils or paleontology along this crazy ride. Again, please comment down below what else you find particularly crazy about this whole dinosaur hoax thing, as this might be my last video on it? Maybe? I can't say that for sure, as unfortunately there are others out there that agree with her, so it'll probably come back to haunt us later. But this might indeed be the last video I respond to from the Christians Against Dinosaurs channel. Here's the thing, I think there is another video that I haven't responded to yet, but I believe it's one where she just kind of rants about the whole conspiracy theory again, and I feel like I've given that plenty of time already. I suppose if you would really like to see me respond to that video, then uh, let me know. Maybe I could do a more off-the-cuff reaction to that one. I don't know. Regardless, that is all I have for you this video, so if you watched this far, thank you so much. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel, Majestic Mashikasaurus. I'm really excited to see where this channel goes in the future, and my next video will... It'll be something a bit different, so anyway, I hope to see you in that one. Peace out.